So a very good morning to you. It was uh, another night of unrest across Europe as the continent continues to wrestle with rising coronavirus cases. Protests against the return of lockdown laws in the Netherlands turned violent, with police clashing with crowds in Rotterdam and The Hague. Thousands of demonstrators also took to the streets in Austria, Croatia, Italy. The World Health Organization has admitted they're really worried about the rise in cases across mainland Europe. Joining us to discuss this uh, and today's other top stories is Letis Bromovsky from Young Voices. Uh, Letis, welcome to the programme. Really good to have you uh, here with us. Um, uh, there is Morning, real kickback, real kickback, isn't there, across uh, Europe to these to these national lockdowns, and uh, you know, in Austria with uh, compulsory vaccination from February. Yeah, no, definitely. What we're seeing across Europe right now is um, a huge backlash against these restrictions of their civil liberties. And I think for many people, it is seen as that. People are fighting for their civil liberties. It's no longer just fighting not to get the vaccine or about people being anti-vaxxers. Um, as you said, yesterday there were in Vienna 10,000 protesters on the streets, even here in London, outside of the Austrian embassy. We had people protesting against these new restrictions and the mandatory uh, vaccines that will be coming in next year. I mean, the reality is that Austria is very much the epicenter of um, this fear that this might then spread to other European countries. They are seriously struggling with their cases. They had around 10,800 new cases daily last week. Um, and essentially, the Austrian Chancellor is saying that um, they can't handle it anymore. Their hospitals are full or there's not enough doctors or nurses to deal with it. Um, but I think that this is entirely the wrong way to be going about this. Um, and it's creating this apartheid between people who are vaccinated and unvaccinated. Who do you think is wrong? You think the government are imposing the uh, wrong level of restrictions on the public? Yes, yes, no, definitely. So I think the government are wrong in this. In Australia, where we have also been seeing um, a lot of demonstrations recently in all the major cities, um, they're, prote they're protesting, sorry, particularly against a public health and well-being bill that was passed. Um, and this bill, which was introduced by the Victorian government, um, would allow them to make indefinite declarations um, of pandemic and state of emergency. So basically give the health minister power to make broad public health orders um, and grant authorised officers the power to detain people under quarantine um, if they are uh, unvaccinated. The real problem, though, for all of these European governments is what's the alternative? Well, I, I think really this comes down to it being a choice. We live in a free and democratic world um, and this should be, like all other medical procedures, a choice. Um, I myself, I'm vaccinated. I'm very much pro the vaccine. I want people to be getting it. But this is creating, um, uh, this is making the making it very tense relations, you could say, between public and government. Um, like in Rotterdam yesterday, two people were shot um, and they've also opened water cannons. I mean, this isn't the direction that we should be going. Um, and WHO have come out and said that this is an increasingly dangerous way for governments to be treating their, their people. Um, uh, just looking at some of the other stories that are around this morning, Letters, um, th th what's this story about the, the health secretary launching a probe into race bias in these medical devices called oximeters, which I believe um, when you go into hospital, they're the ones that you slip on your finger, but they're not very accurate for those with darker skin. Yes. So um, as we can, I'm sure, all remember, when we first saw death rates coming around at the start of coronavirus, um, they were disproportionately higher in people who were black or from Asian backgrounds. Um, and at the time, it was very much believed that this could have been the areas that they were working in or potentially the housing that they were living in. Um, and Public Health England have, in fact, released data recently to show that the deaths from coronavirus um, among people from ethnic minority groups two to four times higher than those um, from the white population. Um, and so this research has really come from the University of Michigan, which last year found about 12% of black patients who were considered to have safe oxygen levels 
um, were in fact dangerously hypoxic. Um, and so from these equipment that you were just discussing, it essentially, because they had always been tested on people from who were white or people in white uh, backgrounds, um, that it was not uh, it was it was not effective on them as much as with white people. If that's true, that would seem like quite a big oversight when you when you're when you're kind of running these tests and you're thinking about the fingers they're going to go on. That would seem like a massive oversight to me, anyway. Yeah, no, it definitely does seem like a massive oversight, and there will have to be. Um, much more as Sajid Javid has opened this investigation into it um, to see whether there has been this racial bias in NHS medical machines. Um, but it will, it would have been a massive oversight, definitely. And it will hopefully open up um, and get more research into this area. Let's move on, if we can, to what's happening on the channel. And this is a conversation that we would expect mm. to be having, you know, around summertime, June, July, August, when, when the weather's OK. It has seriously come to the front in the last few weeks. We are seeing record numbers of people attempting to cross the channel. And there seems to be this, this constant war of words going on as to who actually is to blame. Priti Patel making it very clear that she believes she can find a solution. Do you think there is one and who ultimately is responsible? Well, um, I definitely think on your point about the weather, I just want to quickly say that right now, actually, November is the rather optimal month because the weather has been particularly calm and it's very moderate weather. You know, it's not hot. In the summer, you might find that uh, the sea is much more choppy. Um, in regard to Priti Patel um, and what has been happening with Europe and this war of words, um, I think that as much as she wants to try and push it over to the EU, this is a UK problem. Um, and right now we are clashing, particularly with France, um, on how to handle this. We did sign a deal with France uh, just last year, I believe it was, um, in which we gave them, um, or we would give them £54 million in funding for extra police patrols and surveillance. Um, and in return, there will be 100% inception, interception rate um, of migrants trying to cross. But we are clearly seeing that this is not happening. Uh, this month alone, we've had 4,000 migrants cross, um, which is the highest number ever. Um, and this year, we are up to, uh, I believe it's around 24,000 migrants, which is triple um, our 2020 figures. So something definitely needs to change. And there is a huge amount of pressure currently um, on the government. Um, as next year, we will be having the local elections coming up. Um, this was one of the big promises of the 2019 election, that we would be able to take back control of our borders. And this is just not happening. Um, and so whether this will be a bit of a breaking point for um, the voters of the Conservative Party will yet to be seen. But uh, I believe the Conservative Party should be concerned that they are not fixing this problem and they are not handling it well at all. Well, actually, on that note, Lettuce, the um, front page of the uh, Sunday Telegraph says a migrant crisis puts Tories in peril. Um, and it says senior figures are warning the PM uh, to sort it out as a poll shows 77% of Tory voters think the approach has been too soft. So it does seem to be having an effect on his popularity and the government's popularity. Yes, no, definitely. I agree with that. Um, and aside from it being government issue, there is also this huge humanitarian factor um, that this is a dangerous crossing. People are dying trying to get across. And so not only does something need to be done in order to um, for the Conservatives to potentially win more voters, but it also needs to be done to protect the lives of these people coming across, thinking that this will be uh, the dream country they've always hoped for. Really good to talk to you this morning, Lettuce. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it is early on a Sunday morning, so we do appreciate it. Lettuce Pavovsky there from Young Voices.